Salmon Run Extra Work. As stated here, we will be playing. But how do you play Extra Work? And why is it so important? Well, Extra Work is essentially Salmon Run's version of a limited time League event. In Splatoon 2, League Mode would let you build a power level for you and one to three of your other pals every rotation. And the best players' names would be displayed at the end. In Extra Work, you want to be the best for a special sticker. There's gold, silver, bronze, and then just, just, like, a, just like a normal one. It's been stated in the Japanese Twitter account that the best teams will also be showcased online. Extra work is also like a private job. In private jobs, the weapon you pick stays with you for the entire run. If you select the blaster, for example, you'll have it for all five waves. So choose wisely or maybe just pick your favorite. That's always an option. You can play with two to four people, but unlike League or Anarchy Open, you won't get extra teammates if you have empty spots. Take advantage of pools to get extra people or reach out to pals. I've also linked a couple of active Discord servers dedicated to Salmon Run in the description, and my community Discord is there too. I've linked Hazmi's Discord server and a couple of the community Salmon Run servers, like the Grizzcord. I'd recommend using a generic and simple pool if you don't have friends to play this event with. I could bet you other people will use pools like Extra Work and Salmon Run to recruit people quickly, so you can too. Remember that pools are not case sensitive and they don't have spaces, so as long as you spell it right, you'll be good to go. Extra Work is important because it sets up everyone to learn together. Splatoon is not about reinventing the wheel. This goes for Anarchy, and this also will go for Extra Work. In fact, it's going to be a key example of this. Yes, this will be a competitive Salmon Run event, but this doesn't imply you should be annoyed at higher level players. After all, they've put a lot of time and effort in to get to where they are. Instead, allow for their gameplay to serve as a template for how you can also approach these runs. Someone without experience and likely without callouts won't be able to one-for-one one imitate exactly what a high-level squad is doing, but knowing little things can help. Where are the majority of high-level players starting when, let's say, Wave 4 begins? Are there a lot of fly fish at some point deep in the run? Do players find themselves playing a bit better when they run, let's say, two splatter shots instead of two blasters? This even goes for yourself. If your first attempt at extra work allows you to see all five waves, you already know the basic template for the entire event. It's then up to you, your friends, and the community you're with to figure out the best way to go about winning these waves with, you know, the, the most eggs. Seeing as there's five waves, if there's a group of people out there getting 40 eggs per wave, that's a total of 200 eggs across all five waves. That's a lot of eggs. Here's one example. The event begins. You play through extra work. The five waves are normal tide, high tide, normal tide fog, low tide, and low tide fog. Everyone in the community will continue to have this set of games, with the same boss spawns in the same order for the entire rest of the event. How do you conquer this? What weapon is best for you? When watching high level play, you can try to focus on what players are doing. What about the roles these people prefer? What is the roller player doing a lot of the time? Is there a weapon that is better for egg retrieval? For boss splatting? One that maybe struggles when it throws too many bombs and runs out of ink fast as a result? It's good to think of the pros and cons of the weapon you're picking, since again, I'll reiterate from before, you get to select which weapon you're using. This means you'll be able to have a strategy when you play. You don't have to react on the fly to suddenly having a charger plopped on into your lap, unless you choose to be the charger player. Heck. Your whole team could choose to be Charger players if they want to. With the ideas of others swirling around in your mind, you can then play extra work a little bit better. 
In the end, every player will have the opportunity to figure out what works best for them on their own. That being said, high-level Salmon Run revolves around efficiency. If you're not splatting, painting, or bringing in eggs, you could be. Staying safe, aka staying alive, is always important in Salmon Run. If you see a teammate struggling, paint the area around them or fire at what's giving them trouble. Your teammates and your score will thank you. With the Salmon Run seed being the same, we might even see everyone with the same specials? When are high-level players using their specials and why? Is there a particularly cruel combination of boss spawns that everyone's using their ink strikes on? If people know there's a triple fly fish spawn sometime on wave 3, you bet people will be mentally preparing to take it out as fast as possible. Now, how do you prepare for extra work? Why not use private job to your advantage? While it won't be exactly the same, you could try a private job anytime, even right now, on the map the event is on with the weapons listed. The first private job, at the time I'm making this video, is on Sockeye Station with Splattershot, Blaster, Splat Charger, and Splat Roller. Private jobs work just like private battles. It's the same part of the Samurai menu you would go to when you want to use scenario codes with your friends. Once you have pals assembled, choose a hazard level that you feel comfortable with, pick a weapon that matches the ones available from extra work, and get out there to practice. You can even save private job scenario codes after you play them too, meaning you could retry the same scenario over and over again, even though you'd be limited to three waves instead of five. This would be the closest you can get to emulating the extra work experience, and will feel great if you try it with people who you might end up playing the real deal with. One more thing to note is that extra work is a separate mode from regular Salmon Run. That means you won't have to worry about tanking your normal Salmon Run rank while doing these runs. So be experimental, fight the Salmonids, see how far you can go, and of course, have a ton of fun! That's all I have to say about extra work for now. Nintendo's working hard to keep Splatoon lively. Despite the game being almost seven months old, we're still getting a lot of events, updates, and balancing patches to make the game itself even better. Heck, I, I still haven't tried everything they added with the new balance patch at the start of the month. Best of luck to everyone playing in extra work. I'm sure it'll be a good time, as well as a very good learning experience. I'll stream the event and any future iterations of it as well, so feel free to stop on by and see what's going on. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a good one. If you have any thoughts about extra work, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll try my best to respond to as much as I can. See you later.